Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Welcome back to New York and Sherwood, everybody. Now, I've been looking forward to this one for quite a long time, and uh, I've got Nikki with me for the first time since Farndon, actually. You're in the New York and Sherwood series. While. You're going to love this place, Nikki. Do you know why? Why? Well, look behind you. You can see two towers there, and they belong to a minster, Whoa. which since 1884 has termed itself a cathedral. I am going to have fun looking through and around that building, I'll tell you that for you're, sure. You're going to have fun looking around this entire place. Welcome to the town of Southall. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to the first of the three parishes in Newark and Sherwood which have town status. This is the town of Southall, which lies almost smack bang in the centre of Nottinghamshire, give or take a few miles. This is one of the loveliest towns you can imagine and it's loaded with all kinds of historic buildings, none more impressive than its cathedral, the unparalleled, locally at least, Southall Minster. Now we've already covered all the villages around this one, so some of the road names here will seem very familiar. If you can cast your mind back to the Norrell episode in this very series, you'll remember Southall got a mention there thanks to its name. Both Norrell and Southall are believed to have been the sites of historic wells, Norrell being the more northerly and Southall the more southerly. Several sites in the town claim to be the location of the original well. These include a pub called the Admiral Rodney, as well as two areas close to the Minster. Nobody really knows where it was, or indeed if it existed at all. However, there's plenty we do know about the town. It lies on the River Greet, and it's located nine miles away from the next nearest town, Newark-on-Trent. Southall is famous not just for its minster, but also for a type of fruit. It once had a station at the end of the Southall Trail, and had several mills powered by the Greet. We'll see two of those in this episode. There's loads more, and I've probably not covered everything here, but let's go and find what we did. Before we begin walking, we enter Southall via one of at least five small hamlets which surround it. This is Normanton. It's a linear settlement just to the northeast of the town centre. Landmarks out here include Reg Taylor's Garden Centre and Tea Rooms, which is well worth a visit. Normanton also has Normanton Hall. That's the large yellow brick building located at Cork Hill Road's junction with Normanton Road. It's a country house that dates from around 1870. Built in the Gothic Revival style, it's one of many listed buildings within Southall's boundaries. Too many to count, in fact. As we enter the town, we pass over the now very familiar River Greet, and standing tall over it is Greet Lily Mill. As we know already, there were many former mills on the river. This one used to be a flour mill which ground corn that arrived by both horse and cart and by barge via the wharves at Fiskerton. We'll see this again at the very end of our walk.
Our main route starts with a leisurely stroll down Newark Road. We're working our way into the town centre via some orbital streets. Straight away we have landmarks. First up with its flat roof is the Nottinghamshire Army Cadet Force South Detachment Building. That's a mouthful. A few steps further we've got the town's fire station. This is staffed by on-call staff only who carry pages with them and respond from home. Next it's Minster Veterinary Centre. This practice dates back all the way to World War I, but its current premises was purpose-built on Newark Road in 1998. At the end of Newark Road you hit East Thorpe. That building there is an 82-bedroomed retirement complex and care home named Southall Court. Not far away there's a petrol station with an M&S food store, which is right next to the main entrance to Southall Racecourse. Now, we were walking up this street and Nikki said to me, I completely forgot this place had a race course. Well, it does, Nikki, but we're not going to be seeing it in this episode because I've already covered it. It's in the Rolston episode because it's just over the parish boundary. Does if that mean you... I have to watch another episode? Yeah, look, yeah, well, why not? Why not? Okay. It's all good stuff, this, isn't it? And while we're <laughs> at it, you guys, when you watch this one, go and watch another. <laughs> Let's carry on. Continuing along East Thorpe, we found this attractive old building. Despite a lot of digging, I couldn't pin down what this is or was. There's a B&B next door though. Next at number 69 East Thorpe is the old Coach House, a pub renowned for cascales, craft beers and live music. It used to be known as the White Lion. East Thorpe then turns a corner and we're now heading in a northwesterly direction towards Southern Minster. This street is typically Nottinghamshire. Mostly red brick Georgian properties, Nikki was all over this street and even picked out Ormond House, this one here, as her favourite. It's currently empty and you'll need £675,000 to buy it. Property isn't cheap in Southall. Not far away we've got a local newsagent and then at the end of East Thought we found a building which was repaired thanks to a grant from Newark and Sherwood District Council. That's according to this old sign on its wall. Found an actual phone. I found an actual phone. Has it got a, a dial tone? Has it got a dial tone? <laughs> yeah, but you know, I can remember it used to cost two pence to make a call. Now the minimum is sixty pence. Sixty pence. Sixty pence. Robbing dogs. <laughs> East Thorpe now becomes Church Street and here's a pub called the Hearty Goodfellow. This next thing we're about to talk about is something that blew my mind. I never knew that Southall was the birthplace of a type of apple. Bramley apples originated right here at number 75 Church Street. The variety was first seeded by Mary Ann Brailsford in 1809. 17 year old Henry Merriweather, a local nurseryman at that time, saw its potential and cultivated it from cuttings. The Bramley Apple is referenced in many ways around the town, including in the name of this pub, the Bramley Apple Inn. Even the town council's logo has an apple where the O should be in the word Southall. Next, we find ourselves at Higgins Mead. This contains the remains of an extensive Roman villa. It was once occupied by the local secondary school, the buildings of which were demolished in 2007. The land has now been donated to the town as an open green space. Let me tell you something, the way you know that Nikki is interested in a place is if you're walking around and you turn to look at her and basically you're on your phone looking at all the property and how much it costs and, and you know, dreaming of owning some of it. Am I right? Oh my God, there are some amazing properties in this village, I tell you. Town. You know, town, village, <laughs> whatever. Wherever we are, I you know, I'm, I'm just so blown away. We've seen some... Georgian, Edwardian, Victorian, medieval, we've seen some modern architecture, we've seen houses with unique features, we've seen wonky houses, we've seen straight properly built houses, we've seen all sorts, and I just, I love it, I'm in heaven. You wait until we get to Southern Minster in a few minutes. <laughs> Now 
In the Upton episode, we talked a little bit about the Reverend John Beecher, or Betcher. The man himself lived here at this grand house on Burgage Lane between 1805 and 1848. This blue plaque tells us he was a dominant influence in the town, especially in matters relating to the workhouse, Southerminster, and the House of Correction. The path we've just used to get here is even called Beecher's Walk, which runs from Church Street to Burgage Lane. Our next job is to head towards King Street, which is Southall's main shopping and commercial centre. It features a raft of pubs. In Beecher's time, Southall used to have 18 of them. There's a few less now. On your screen now is the Wheat Sheaf, a 17th century building with oak beams and both a front and back bar. Google tells me though that it's permanently closed now, but if you're after a drink, don't worry, there are plenty more pubs here. Our next job was to explore the Market Square. Okay, we've hit the Market Square and Nikki cannot resist the market, and to be fair, neither can I. So let's have a little wander around the market and see what's for sale. <laughs> what have we got here, Nikki? Bakers. Bakers. Because I want some things for next Saturday, don't I? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Yeah, come on in. So the TVI pounds are out straight away. I'm going to have a, a little walk around while Nikki just pays for that and see what else this has got. All sorts. It's quite a sizable market, this, to be fair. We've got butchers, we've got plant stalls. There's a clock tower in the middle of this as well. So I'll just head around here. What have we got here? Oh, dog food, pet food. There's the flower store. Clock tower is just there behind this stall. So I'm just going to walk through here to find that. There we are, look. It says Southall underneath the clock. Let's go around this way. I've noticed a town council notice board over there. Nikki's got the cards at the moment, so I shall wait for her to join me and we'll leave a card on this in a second. Typical Nottinghamshire board as well because it's for the Diamond Jubilee. We've seen that all over Nottinghamshire. I think he's still paying for that, uh, <laughs> for that stall. It's taking her a while. Let's see what's around this side. Uh, let's head down here. I don't think I can go that side. So we've got a fruit and veg stall here. A tree with some seats around it. Quite a nice market. Here comes Nikki now. Head back around here. Nice way to spend a Saturday morning, this, to be honest with you. Morning. Morning. Have you sorted it? <laughs> Took your time. <laughs> Have you got the. Uh, oh, sorry. Have you got the CVI cards, Nikki? Right, because there's a board here. I'll let, I'll let you do it though. You let me do it? Yeah, well, at least I've got a nice little table to perch the camera on to do it. Tiny bit, of... Tiny bit of blue tack. Well, you know, I do visit a lot of places. <laughs> so, you know. So, yeah, nice little market square. Yeah. I can't get this blue tack off this card. I know you can't see this, but I'm kind of struggling at the moment. <laughs> I've got it eventually. Southall is officially done. Let's continue through the town centre. There are very few chain stores here, instead Southall has a range of local independent shops. This is the Admiral Rodney, one of the claimed locations of the South Well, which gives the town its name. The pub is named after the sailor who masterminded the defeat of the Spanish Navy at the Battle of Cape St Vincent in 1780. This plaque on its wall also tells us about two former pubs. The Portland Arms, which is now where the Portland Arcade is today, and the Black Bull, whose name lives on through Bull Yard. This is a small offshoot of King Street, which takes us around onto Queen Street. There are yet more shops here, and interesting buildings too. In fact, where Queen Street and Marketplace meet each other, there's an old theatre, which is now a deli. It's an attractive town centre for many reasons, and you can bet it gets very busy at times. We loved it. There are so many little shops and little 
I don't know how to describe them, little courtyards here in Southall Town Centre. It's amazing what's here. I obviously I can't film it all because there's so much of it. I'd be here all day. There's even another pub behind me which I've yet to talk about. That's called the Saracen's Head. If I just hop out of the way, you will uh, see it there. It's the um, black and white Tudorish style building. It looks again winky wonky. Nikki would love that, I'm sure. I'll tell her about that. But at the moment, Nikki's gone in the shop that's behind me because we spotted uh, a shop that sells Lincolnshire plum bread, and I haven't had that for a long time. So Nikki's just going to go and pick some of that up before we move on. Our next landmark is the biggest landmark here in Southall. If you look to your left, you'll see a little junction that takes us towards Southall Minster. The Saracen's Head is synonymous with Charles I. This is where he spent his last few days of freedom in 1646 before giving himself up to the Scottish commissioners. The Crown Hotel is directly opposite the Saracen's Head. This is an early 19th century coaching inn, although much of its interior was refitted within the last century. We're now on Church Street again. The tall building here is the former Southall Collegiate Grammar School, which still sort of exists through its amalgamation with the town's current secondary school. We're now approaching the Minster. This building is the Refectory, which was established within the Minster's grounds in 1989. It has a cafe and a shop. Also within the grounds is a Stone of Remembrance, taken from the East Mole, one of the two long concrete jetties used to evacuate soldiers during the Battle of Dunkirk in World War II. We've now arrived at the Minster's entrance, and we're about to go in. Prepare to be amazed. Okay, I'm going to take some shots of the Minster from the outside in a moment, but we're going to have a look inside first. It's open Monday to Saturday from 8 at 8.30 a.m. and it's past that, so guess what? We're going in. Nikki has noticed these doors. Wooden doors with iron studs in them. Very, well, very, very old. Very old. Absolutely beautiful. It's only going to get better, I'm sure, inside. Sure. So here we go into Southern Minster. I've never been in here before, despite the fact I have been to Southern before. So let's have a little look around in here. One thing I can tell you to start with is how big this place is. If I just make my way to the centre of the nave you can see wow this is one big religious building and no mistake check out that window i'm being summoned hello nikki wants me back i go through the chairs what have we got so this is, you know, a relative, or what's a relatively new, in the last few years, the easiest way to donate to the upkeep of fabulous buildings like this is by doing a digital donation. So you just tap in the amount that you want. And use contactless. And you use contactless. And how easy is that? Very. We're all on our own in here. There's nobody else here at the moment. What an amazing place. We have... There's a font there. Pulpit. We've got this effectively all to ourselves at the moment. Awesome. Look how worn away these stones are. That's, that's obviously a, a, a grave marker or a burial marker, but completely worn away. I imagine there's been a fair few people walk through this uh, through this church in its in its time. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a, a bishop here. Who's this dude, Nicky? Sir Edwin Hoskins, the 12th Baronet and 2nd Bishop of Southall. Okay. He's got a mighty fine house. Queen Elizabeth's been here. Ah. For the Maundy service, they did the Maundy service here in 1984. It's well, Maundy. Right. <laughs> So her Madge has been, her late, majesty. her late Majesty, yes, has been present in this place. Got a little offshoot here. Oh, we're not alone in here. I can hear somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
Nikki's architectural eye is definitely coming out again in here. Here's a nice arch as well at the end of this. Chapter house, yes. Lots of light in here. Look how light this is compared to the, the main nave. And you know why? Because there's not much stained glass. It's very echoey in here as well. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. What's, um, what are these little seats, Nikki? They're, 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 they're all of them got, sort of, got place names on them. There. Oh, yeah. South Muscombe. South Muscombe. We, all, we, we know most of these, don't we? We've been to some of these. <laughs> Hallerton. There's one you'll all be familiar with around Sovel. So it turns out the other voices that we could hear is actually a service in progress at the moment through there. Now, I'll show you this as best I can, but I don't really want to interrupt them. So, I'll just stand here, you can probably see Oh, maybe you can't. The, the, the people in question are over here. But uh, it's not fair to stand next to them with the camera, so this is probably the safest place to do it from. I don't like to interrupt services, as I'm sure you're aware from previous videos. So now we're on the other side of the Minster. What have you spotted? Oh, a war memorial. Okay. There we go. So here we've got something about Frank Russell Barry, who died in 1976, a scholar, a pastor and a prophet, fellow and chaplain of Oriel College, army chaplain, principal, Lutzford, uh, ordination school, professor, King's College, London. There's, he's got a lot here, this guy, hasn't he? He was, he, was the, bishop he was the Bishop of Southall from 1941 to 1963. Oh, the bells are ringing now. It is, without a doubt, Southall's most iconic landmark, this. I would say, in the grand scheme of things, in terms of buildings, it's its finest attribute. So we've seen the interior, now let's see the exterior and what it looks like when you're stood outside in that massive churchyard. It looks just as impressive out there as it does in here. So we've seen the inside of Southerminster, this is what it looks like on the outside, and here's a few more facts. The Minster has been a cathedral since 1884, but the first church on this site was built in 627 by Paulinius, who at that time was the Archbishop of York. The Minster's choristers are still educated to this day at the local secondary school, which we'll come to shortly. In 2009, a stained glass window was placed in the Minster to mark the bicentenary of the Bramley Apple. Right next to the Minster are the ruins of the Archbishop of York's Palace. These adjoin the present official residence of the Bishop of Southall. Dating from the 14th century, this was wrecked during the Civil War. Its most famous resident was Cardinal Wolsey. It was in the state chamber of the Great Hall, seen here, where he would hold his last frantic meetings in 1530 to try and extricate himself from his failure to secure Henry VIII a divorce from Catherine of Aragon. Nikki, question for you. Yeah. Sum up Southern Minster, if you can, please, in one word. That's actually a statement, not a question, but it'll do. I can't do it. There's too many words. I was absolutely blown away by this place. Really, really beautiful inside and out. It's such a peaceful building. Normally, when you find a, a minster or a cathedral like this, it can be quite busy, people buzzing around. We're pretty much on our own in there, and it was just so... I mean, I know it's still early in that, but... It was just so peaceful, really lovely. 10 out of 10, we'll call again. So after walking around the Minster, we've called back to the old theatre deli, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. And you can see, I am definitely not on a diet at the moment. This is uh, hot chocolate, hot chocolate with, with every, single, every, single topping, every single topping it's got. It even has a flake. I mean, blimey. No half measures here. On the other side of the Minster is Southall's War Memorial Park. 
the entire site is dedicated to Southall's fallen from both the world wars. It has a massive archway, wrought iron gates and a dedicatory board at its entrance. It was dedicated in 1948 in a service led by the Provost of Southall. The park has a playground and many sports facilities, including Southall Town Bowls Club with its carpet-like, immaculately manicured green. On the opposite side of the road alongside the park is the local scout hut, and if you keep going you find another building relating to a local football club. Founded in 1893, that club would be Southall City. This is their community building. They're nicknamed the Bramleys, yet another reference to the Bramley Apple. And at the end of the road there are two footpaths which fork in different directions. Where they meet there's a small cemetery. We went in to have a look. In true Nikki fashion, Nikki has gone off and gone for a look around this cemetery. We're not going to spend very long in this cemetery to be honest with you because there's still plenty more to see here in Southall. Our next landmark is one of its schools and Southall has plenty of those. This one we're heading for though is Minster School. Secondary education in Southall is provided mainly by the Minster School, a specialist college for humanities and music. It can trace its history back to the year 956, making this the 19th oldest school in the world. It's had a few sites around the town, but has been located here on Nottingham Road since 2006. It stands right next to Southall Leisure Centre, which has been a mainstay in the town since 1965. It's run by the District Council's leisure provider, Active for Today. By following a footpath from the school, we find ourselves on Westgate. That building there is an old cinema, which is now an apartment block. Westgate is generally residential. It's the continuation of King Street and Marketplace. There's a few more shops up here, but much fewer and further between. It does have, though, the Reindeer, a traditional 18th century pub, which is within 50 yards of Southern Minster's gates. It's dog friendly too. Here's me thinking we dealt with all the hills that we were supposed to deal with on this route yeah, and then no. we turned onto Lowe's Wong and saw that the hill was right in front of us and we were just like, oh, like that basically. But thankfully we don't have to walk up this hill for very long before we turn right. We're heading for some more schools including Lowe's Wong Junior and Infant School. Minster School isn't the only important educational building in Southall. By following this hilly footpath from Lowe's Wong, we find ourselves at another. The Lowe's Wong schools, both junior and infant, have origins which go back well over a century when the National Church of England and Methodist schools were built to serve Southall. Lowe's Wong's most famous pupil is one you already know all about, South Pole record holder Fiona Thornwell. The Lowe's Wong area does have a couple of other landmarks like a Catholic church for example, but they're not on our already lengthy route. Once past the schools we then walked along Hallam Road and then Kirklington Road for a little while into an area that's predominantly residential. We did find another landmark down here, this old school. This was a Sunday school originally built in 1875. It's now an acupuncture clinic according to its gates. Now aside from the school which we've just seen, that area we've just walked through isn't terribly interesting is well, it? Uh, what you mean is there's not much features in it, it's residential? Not really, no, no. But this residential area is now going to come to an end and we're heading back into the town centre. There's a few more things to catch before we bring this epic walk to a close. One of them is the town hall and there's also a railway station and a couple more pubs to see as well. So we're not done with this one just yet. Buses are one thing we've not mentioned yet. Southall has a few services, but here on King Street you can catch the 227, which runs between Edwinstow and Newark. Heading east now, out of the town, we come to an old water pump that stands opposite Burgage Green. This has been moved from its original position. 
Directly opposite is Burgage Manor, where between 1804 and 1806 the English romantic poet George Byron, better known as Lord Byron, lived with his mother. Moving down the road we have the Southall Cross. This is another war memorial commemorating the 112 Southall men who were lost in the two world wars. As Burgage opens out into a wide green, you'll find Southall's old courthouse, which is now used as the town hall and the base for the town council. Next to it is the daunting gateway to the former House of Correction, built back in 1807. Although this is well preserved, the rest of the prison has long since disappeared. OK, this has been an epic journey around the town of Southall. Nikki has gone back to the car to leave me to do the last part of this walk on my own. We're heading for something we saw quite a lot of in the last few episodes in this series, and that's the Southall Trail, which ends, of course, at the former Southall Railway Station. Via Archer's Field we've hit the Southall Trail. This should be familiar to you all by now. This is the very end of the trail because it was where the Mansfield to Southall Railway line ended at Southall Station. Greet Lily Mill, the massive former corn mill we drove past earlier, is right next to the former station site. This belonged to Charles Caldwell and so it was also known as Caldwell's Mill. It suffered three fires in its history, the worst of which was in June 1893. It destroyed virtually all of the insides, but buildings like these were built to last. It still survives today, although now it's a block of flats. Today the former railway station is a private residence, and this nursery stands opposite the building. The railway history here is preserved thanks to a pub as well, and that would be the Final Whistle, whose name is a reference to a train whistle. It has a railway theme inside, and it's teeming with all kinds of railway memorabilia. And with Greet Lily Mill as my backdrop, that, my friends, has been the main walk around the town of Southall. However, we are not totally done with this episode just yet. There's a few things in the environs around the town, and today's special section will tell you a few of those. Among the other landmarks not covered in the town on the main walk is the Catholic Church. You'll find Our Lady of Victories on Woolsey Close off Hallam Road. Southall also has Holy Trinity Church on Westgate, which was built between 1844 and 1846 by Waitman and Hadfield of Sheffield. Towards Brinkley on Southall's outskirts you'll find Southall Garden Centre, Pictured, and the town's massive area of allotments. In Brinkley there's also a small golf club called The Orchards. Southall also has Norwood Park Golf Club as well, on its northerly border with Hallam. Also in Brinkley is Southall City's home ground. Named the Centenary Ground, they've played here since 2021 after several years at the Memorial Park. And sticking with the sports theme, the town also has a rugby club, which isn't far away from the Leisure Centre on Nottingham Road towards Hallerton. And also on the outskirts of the town you'll find this tree. This is known as the Africa Tree and you can probably understand why. It looks like it belongs somewhere in subtropical Africa, doesn't it? It's quite amazing. You don't see many of them around here, and certainly not in Nottinghamshire. <laughs> right, we've got one more thing to do in the uh, town of Southall, the parish of Southall, and that's head to a place called Maythorn. Now, we've seen Greet Lily Mill. We're also going to see another mill out there, which is an old silk mill. Maythorn is a hidden gem. It's one of those well out of the way places situated off Kirklington Road and on the River Greet at the end of a long dead end road. It's known for its mill and if you thought Greet Lily was impressive, check this out. This is the old silk mill. Maythorn was built around this mill which dates from 1785. Originally it was a cotton mill and it supplied the framework knitting industry with yarns. The speculator that built Maythorn was a subtle hop merchant. It was powered, of course, by this, the River Greet, which rushes past Maythorn on its way to Southall. The power of the water drove its water wheel. In the early 19th century, the mill was adapted to produce silk and lace thread, hence the old silk mill name. 
it employed 70 workers, mainly females, some of whom travelled in from Southall, but others lived in Maythorn in these cottages. Like Greek Lily Mill, this mill building has now been converted into residential flats. And that brings us to the end of the Southall episode of Newark and Sherwood. There are 10 left in this series now. It only seems like yesterday that I began this uh, this series, to, to be quite honest. it's I've rattled through it. So, uh, yeah, the 10 that are left are going to be awesome, just as awesome mm. as this. This has been a, 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 an exhilarating episode, hasn't it? It's been lovely. I've right enjoyed it. I mean, the town itself has just been an absolute joy and so much to see and, you know, places to visit and all the rest of it. it it's just one of those places that you could you could spend a week in and probably still find new stuff. It's, probably, you know, yeah. Everywhere we sit. Excuse me. Everywhere we turned, there were blue plaques and signs and something to look at, something interesting to see. You. I just, I thought, you okay? I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> it sounds like you have. I'm not drunk, I promise. <laughs> well, it's not even 11, it's not even 12 o'clock yet. In, in much <laughs> the same way as other small towns we've done in the past, there's probably loads we haven't covered, and I'm well aware I probably haven't been to every yeah. little nook and cranny. You can't really in towns like this because because they're so loaded with stuff. You know, it, I would I would be here all day if I tried to cover every last detail. Yeah. I hope though I have covered the main stuff and you've enjoyed our little walk around the town of Southall. Min the Southern Minster is is yeah. well worth coming to visit. Definitely. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the town of Southall, and I'm out. <laughs>